Okay, take a breath. Well done. We are now on to part two. Hopefully you've got that, that somewhere there on screen. We need to, we're required to prove um, this weird looking result. I'm gonna talk, talk about it in a second to give you that same nudge that I gave you before, okay? Here's what we were required to prove. IN equals, oh my goodness, two to the two N on, it's N factorial squared, all divided by, 2n plus 1 factorial. Where do I even start? There's this scene in the movie Inception. I don't know how many of you guys have seen the movie Inception, Leonardo DiCaprio um, and a bunch of other people, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Um, there's this scene in the movie where uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, the main character, he's talking to another person who's realizing that he's not awake, he's in a dream and he starts to panic. And Leonardo DiCaprio says to him, don't panic, I know this looks terrible and you're frightened, but remember your training and you'll be able to get through this. And that's exactly what I want to say to you here as you look at this hilariously awkward result that you have to prove. Don't panic, don't be intimidated by how awful this looks, remember your training, you actually know enough to deal with this. It looks weird because it's a strange looking expression, fraction, and there's these weird, weird factorials in there. Like, how did they even arrive? But I want you to consider two things. Like, what's being asked of you here, right? Number one, we are trying to express I n without any integrals on the right hand side. Now, if you just ignored this, right? Like, just imagine it wasn't there, okay? It was I n, and then on the right hand side, you've just got stuff without integrals. Whatever they are, that always means we're tr gonna try and go from our recurrence relation and step down, 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 down the ladder until we get to a point where we can actually evaluate one of those integrals. And then you have no integrals left, so therefore you can say, oh, it's equal to this, and it's an expression, it's a formula that is independent of calculus. So we've done this a bunch of times before, even though this looks terrible, um, we can still do it, okay? We're gonna have to step down through the ladder like we've done many times before. The second thing that is worth pointing out is that actually, even though factorials are weird, you're like, this is not perms and comms where I normally see factorials. We shouldn't be that surprised that a factorial will appear in a recurrence relation because factorials themselves are recurrence relations, aren't they? Think about this, right? What is the definition, whoops, what is the definition of n factorial? Isn't it n times n minus one and you keep on climbing down until you get to one. In other words, it's n minus one factorial. Can you see that? You can use the sort of recurrence relation notation that we've been using um, already, like call it f for factorial. It's clearly n times f n minus one. There it is, recurrence relation. So actually, low key, um, recurrence relations turn up with, or they result in factorials a lot more than you would think. It's just that we don't always go to the actual working, okay? So we shouldn't be that surprised that a factorial appears is my point. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give you that same nudge Mm, I'm not gonna give you heaps of time, sorry. This is taking longer than I thought, but that's, I, I can blame some people and their wonderful singing uh, expertise for that, so um, I, I'm gonna do it. Uh, I'm gonna give you the nudge um, to get towards uh, this particular result, but I'm not gonna, let, I'm not gonna finish it here. Uh, I'm gonna give you some time to give it a go. So here's my nudge. From part one, right, that result that we just proved, um, I've got this, right, here it is, part one. And I can use this result to step down the ladder. I can just look and see what happens as I go down to the n minus one step, right? By substituting in n minus one to everywhere that I saw n on this line of the formula. So what happens? Well, if you think about this, you're gonna get two times n minus one on the top. And then on the denominator, um, you're gonna get that same thing to n minus one, but you're adding one, yeah? And then one step down. Now. I'm seeking to establish a pattern, right? So therefore, I'm going to expand what you can see here on the numerator and the denominator because I think it will make the pattern more obvious. On the numerator, you're gonna get 2n minus two. And because the denominator is just one bigger, 2n plus one, than the numerator, I can just go straight to, like I don't even think about the expansion, right? It's going to be 2n minus one. That's one bigger than the numerator, right? And then the n minus two is there. You wanna make a pattern in AP or a GP or anything, you need a third term, right? So let's just go to I n minus two, and hopefully you're seeing the pattern here, right? Maybe you can even expand at the same time. When you put in n minus two into here, you get two n minus four on the top, and the denominator is just one bigger than that. 
2n minus 3, and then it goes to the next step. So look carefully, right? From this numerator to this numerator to this numerator. It's decreasing by 2. Of course it is because you're multiplying that whole numerator by 2. So as you step down one at a time, you're going in steps of 2. And the denominator is doing much the same thing. It goes from 2n plus 1 to 2n minus 1 to 2n minus 3. Of course it's going at the same rate because it's the same as the numerator, but one bigger. Okay, so we need to know, this is where the series, or the product rather, series is a, a sum, these things are being multiplied. This is where the product begins. We need to know where the product, where these terms end up. Where can I step off the ladder of the recurrence relation to actually evaluate one of these integrals, okay? So I'm gonna say, over to you. Can you work out where this, this term, these terms, um, this big long product, where do they end? And then can you put that all together to come up with the result that we want us to prove in part two? I'm trying to determine where these, end, where these terms end, which like I said means that we've got to get through these i n, i n minus one terms, etc. until I land on something I can integrate quite comfortably. So let me just go back to what the original integral looks like. Ta-da, there it is, right? There's i n, okay? So I need to choose some value of n that I'm like, yeah, I feel comfortable integrating that, like I can do this result and I can just work out a number out of this. Now, um, we know that we're gonna have to go a fair way along, um, so we go from n to n minus one, n minus two, etc. Um, a factorial ends at one, right? Like the last terms is like times three times two times one. So n equals one is not a bad like thought. Often recurrence relations, once you get to n equals one, you can evaluate. But when you look at it very quickly, when you put n equals one into here, what do you get? Sine cubed of two theta d theta? No thanks, right? So therefore, even though I can work out I1 in a second, I think I'm gonna to need to go one more step after that, which is zero. Not all recurrence relations are defined for n equals zero. Um, in fact, you can see here, you've got like this thing, this in says, hey, n is greater than or equal to one, but then I want you to go back and see the original one here, it's defined for zero. The reason why this n is greater than or equal to one is applied is because there's an i n minus one there. So if you put zero into this expression, or this equation rather, you'd get an i of negative one, that's not allowed, um, but this one can go all the way down to zero. So that's where I'm going to head. Let's go ahead and evaluate i zero. It's going to be the integral from naught to pi on two of sine, okay, here comes the two times zero, which is zero, plus one. So that's just one. Sine of two theta, d theta. That's a relief. This I know how to integrate. In fact, I already integrated this exact thing back when I did integration by parts. This is gonna be negative a half of cos two theta, and here are my boundaries, naught to pi on two. Hopefully this is fairly routine at this point. If you pull out your negative a half, you're gonna be into evaluating cos pi and cos zero. I think you guys can handle that. By the time you get through those lines of working, I hope you land on one. All that work for one. Okay, yes, that's fine. Um, that's exactly where you end, but for reasons that are gonna become clear for a second, I'm gonna also need like a little bit before that so that I can see fully where this pattern is, is looking at and how I can identify bits of it that are useful for me to prove the result I've been asked. So I'm gonna go I1. So before I climb down the ladder from the top, from N, N minus one, N minus two, etc. here I've started at the bottom and I'm just sort of climbing up just a teeny bit so I can see where this thing finishes, okay? Um, as you saw right before, again, from part one, here's our definition for i n. So if my i n minus one is gonna be i zero, because I know what that's equal to, then I'm choosing n equals one on the left-hand side here, right? So it's gonna be i one equals two, oopsie daisy, two n, which in this case is two, over two n plus one. So that's two plus one, and then I multiply by i naught. So I'm getting two thirds times one, which is two thirds.